are video games art? Well, son, I'm sure I speak for the both of us when I say... Oh, I should have known you would mock me. Yes, of course they are. If you consider this question for any length of time, and your immediate response is not fucking obviously, you should not talk about art. You should not call yourself a critic. You do not know what art is. And yeah, I'm talking to you too, Roger Ebert. May you rest in peace. You were a part of my childhood. A hundred years ago, critics were still debating whether Monet was an artist. Today, this entire question seems ridiculous. Obviously, Monet's paintings are art. Is a novel art? Is a symphony art? Is a film art? When you glance at the history of the humanities, it's very simple. First we had storytelling, then we had poetry, then we had painting and sculpture, then we had music, then drama, then we had fashion, then we had literature and photography, then we had cinema, then we had video games. None of these art forms was created in a vacuum. Each incorporated some elements of the art forms which came before, was influenced by the media of its day, and adapted to the influence of what came after. You wouldn't argue that Wagner's Ride of the Valkyries is less artistic than Beethoven's Ninth Symphony just because the form was written for an opera, while the latter was just music for its own sake. You wouldn't argue that Pagliacci was less artistic than Hamlet because it was set to music. You wouldn't argue that the story in the death of Superman is less of an artistic story because it's told partially through pictures, nor that these hand-drawn panels are somehow less artistic because they include text. This is because to argue these things would be to argue that multimedia art is somehow less than the sum of its parts. Does this architect's use of sculpture detract from the building, or... Does their place on the structure steal something essential from these gargoyles? What is lost from this painting because of the fashionable clothes it features? Or is the designer's work diminished for being depicted in paint? Does this film's musical score distract from the action, or does the action mitigate the impact of the score? Greetings, plebeians! It is I, Lord Bacchus Scott Shankington III, Esquire. As an aristocrat, I am in a unique position of privilege which allows me to speak on matters of art with authority. So listen well. You may think the arts exist to provide aesthetic pleasure, or to entertain, or to distract you from the dreadful and dreary experience of life as a peasant. In fact, art serves only to distinguish the haves from the have-nots, namely those who have culture, and those who have it not. You see, those of us who have money decide what becomes art because we can choose to be patrons. Without the wealthy, I therefore dare say there would exist nothing in the world which should be worthy of being considered art. Objectively, Renoir was truly never an artist in his life, because his work appealed mainly to the proletariat. Oh, but in time, for this reason or that, the bourgeoisie decided to acquire a taste for his pictures, so Renoir became an artist after his death. The same can be said for Vermeer, Van Gogh, Monet, and of course that rapscallion Picasso. Now, the gentleman who painted me, one Peter Paul Rubens, had many extremely wealthy and important supporters. He 
was indubitably an artist. Oh, but alas, video games, you see, have no such patronage. I... Oh. Oh, dear. Oh, I see. Well, I have finished speaking now. You may return to your filthy lives of unwashed, joyless drudgery. Let's take a look at Skyrim. The Riverwood Trader is everything you need in a general store. Careful with that! This game features a full-length score, a complex system of logic and laws, and an imaginary world rendered fully in 3D. A composer had to write this music, and a group of musicians had to play it. Everything you see now was visualized by an artist and drawn from every angle. A painter could recreate this tree in less than an afternoon, but this tree was not hand-drawn. It is comprised of a line of characters, likely pages long. Putting this tree in this spot may have taken countless man-hours, not even to mention the technical skill required to accurately encode that first artist's vision of this specific tree. This applies even more strongly to indie developers, sometimes a team of as little as one man who must wear the hat of composer, illustrator, storyteller, and programmer. Yet some would entertain the question of whether a project which combines and incorporates storytelling, music, drama, fashion, architecture, drawing and painting, and cinema as its elements in a way the audience can not only view but act upon and interact with can be considered art. There can be no debate when one of two positions is so categorically, completely untenable. As with any single medium artwork, multimedia art can be done poorly. As with any entertainment, it can aim for a goal that doesn't appeal to you, or that you find unworthy of pursuing. I've never enjoyed the abstract expressionist paintings of Jackson Pollock, or the atonal music of Igor Stravinsky. I look at one number 31, 1950, or listen to Rite of Spring, and I feel nothing. Does my interpretation of these works strip them of some essential property? You might say that a small dog is not a real dog. You might not like small dogs. You may have no desire to own a small dog. You might not respect people who choose to own a small dog. But a biologist will tell you, no matter what you say, a chihuahua is a dog, and so is a Great Dane. I don't want to give the impression that I'm trying to say that video games are inherently superior to any other medium of expression, though it is the one that has captivated and excited me more than any other, and it's been that way my whole life. Video games are literature. Video games are music. They are sculpture, painting, storytelling, architecture, and fashion. They are art. Unless the collaboration of a dozen different artistic disciplines is somehow lesser than the sum of its parts. Now I realize that I am arguing toward a small minority. I am aware that the vast majority of people, not just gamers, but artists and critics as well, I assume, would agree with me. But I can tell that there is at least somebody out there who is still arguing against the position that I'm holding here. I can tell that because of articles like this. Defending the right for video games to be considered an art form. And then there are articles on the topic that are just confusing, like this one, which basically just goes on to say, why do we care? The grapes are probably sour anyway. Well, you know, <laughs> a lot of us are feasting on those grapes and they're just fine. And you know, in his 2010 article, Roger Ebert spends a lot of time talking about cave paintings and comparing video games to cave paintings. Let's just brush aside the debate on whether this is art or not. The year before this article was released, the most popular games of the year included Uncharted 2, 
Dragon Age Origins, Batman Arkham Asylum. Okay, we had games that were not the equivalent of cave paintings. This did not take a hundred people a year and a half to create. And again, we'll brush aside the debate over whether primitive art is still art. He then goes on to distinguish between art and games. A game can't be art because you can't win at art. Oh, well, what about this game that has a story and it's very deep and... Oh, well, that's not a game. That's right. See, Dragon Age Origins is not art because you can win. See, I, I don't understand where this dichotomy comes from. This is not a distinction that needs to be made. So is Dragon Age Origins a story or a game? Oh, well, it, it has a story, so it, it must not be a game. Oh, but there is an objective and you can win. Oh, well, then, um, it's not art. It's a game. So remember that thing I said before about the gargoyles and the fashionable clothes and the John Williams and all that? Well, if a video game like Dragon Age Origins is something that combines a story, which is art, I hope we can agree, with a game, which may or may not be art, then the question you have to ask is, is the story like Jesus and it purifies the non-artness of the game, or is the game like sin and it sullies and corrupts the art that it's combined with, resulting in something that is not art? Hey, you know, I was watching a late night show with, uh, what's his name, on whatever show he does now, and, uh, he had Daniel Radcliffe on, and, uh, Daniel was talking about this theater project he's working on that is, um, completely focused on audience participation and interaction. So, is that not theater? Because the audience is encouraged to be a part of the show? When art can be acted upon and interacted with, by the audience, it then ceases to be art. So, uh, if I was going to try and meet Roger halfway here, I think I would say maybe game is the wrong nomenclature for video games. Uh, maybe they should be called interactive media, but I really don't see why that, that has to be a distinction that needs to be made. And I would still argue that games like Pac-Man that lack a story and lack the elements of cinema or fashion or architecture are still art because they are an artisan's project. Somebody with very specialized skills had to create this, and it took them a long time. And in the end, it, it provides a sense of aesthetic pleasure and joy and entertainment. And that's all that art really needs to be. Art can make a point about something it can tell a story, it can include the audience, it doesn't need to do any of those things to be art. So that's about all I have to say on this. If you were indifferent, then, you know, good for you. Uh, if you're still indifferent, good for you. Uh, if you hadn't made up your mind yet or hadn't really thought about it, maybe I convinced you. But anyway, thanks for watching, and uh, have a good day.